We want to start off with a reminder that we are not doctors. Before you make any changes or try something new, always consult with your doctor and medical team first. Chronic illness can vary from patient to patient, so it's always best to consult with your own doctor for what is best for you. Hello and welcome to IB Determined. I'm your host, Mason Harvey, and I speak from the role of a patient and I have Crohn's disease. And I'm your other host, Michelle Harvey. I speak from the role of a caregiver and a mom. I'm Mason's mom, as most of you know, and today we're going to talk about something that would have grossed you out probably like, you know, 10 years ago mm -hmm. when, you know, when you used to talk about intestines or stuff, yeah. like stuff like that, you're like, Ugh. but today we're going to talk about how the digestive system works and how it can affect malnutrition with IBD. And this is a really, I think, important topic because a lot of us we've taken classes. I mean, you take lab biology, some have mm -hmm. taken human anatomy, you know, you have your middle school, high school classes, and some have gone on in college to take in further courses in this. But most of us don't really remember probably exactly how things work and mm -hmm. why having inflammation can be such a big deal. Like a what big makes problem. This, yeah. And like what makes it such an invisible disease? And so I think it's just, it's really important to understand this because it may help you understand out there you know, why things are happening. And even if you might look okay on the outside, like why you're you not doing well on the inside, you're not know. doing yeah. well. Yeah. And like why labs are coming back strange or why you're losing weight. And so I think that like for us, when Mason was diagnosed and they said he had malnutrition going on, we were like, but he eats. Yeah. But he eats. And so, why does so it happen, you know? yeah. And so a lot of people probably think, Hey, my kid's thin, but he's eating. He must just have really good metabolism. And yeah. so <laughs> you're not thinking as much on it as you really should be. And so it's just important to understand this process and know that, yeah, you can eat and you can still be malnourished because yeah. of malabsorption. And so that's why today's lesson is going to be really important. So I hope you guys stick with us and kind of follow through. And I mean, I know it's probably not for some of you may not be the most exciting topic, but I think it'll be interesting. Yeah, I think this will probably be one of the more interesting ones. Yeah. But and I, I think can't. you're going to find out some stuff about you as well in here. That you I'm going to learn about sense. myself. <laughs> yeah. And so there was something with Mason that we didn't realize till after he was feeling better. And that was he hadn't really ever felt hunger. Hunger. You know, while, while he was in a flare and he was just like, it's always like to get him to eat. It's like, it was a why challenge. aren't you hungry? And he's like, I'm just not feeling hungry. And I'm like, how can you not feel hungry? And so I think a lot of you parents out there or even adults can relate to this who are going through a flare or, you know, who knows, maybe you don't think you're in a flare yet, or maybe it's just the IBD, but it can play tricks on one the, you. Actually, one of the first things that happens when I go into a flare, mm -hmm. which strangely hasn't happened the past two times. Yeah. Yeah. That this is This time and um the last time well the last one wasn't really a true flare it was caused more because of a bacteria infection yeah but this one i think it was more of a normal flare but it wasn't mm -hmm. as bad but usually the first sign i have is my like hunger yeah my, your appetite my appetite goes mm -hmm. away so i'm not as hungry which would make sense because when i was in the flare you know when we didn't really know what it was um i wasn't as hungry yeah. So that's one so, of the first signs I would I usually get when I'm in right. a flare. And then when he started feeling better and he's like, all of a sudden he's like, hey, I feel hungry. <laughs> I feel hungry. It's like, and so no one has really ever explained this to us. It's been mentioned to the doctors and, you know, it's, it's not like anybody has time to take, you know, 45 minutes to sit down and explain this process, but I'm naturally curious about it because mm -hmm. I feel like there's a connection there because a lot of times, you know, malnutrition or, or, IBD patients not eating, it's attributed to their fear of food because it may trigger something or it's attributed to pain. But, you know, what if those aren't the causes for some of you? And what if it's you are eating and you're like, why is this? You know, why am I not gaining weight or why are my labs so bad? So anyways, we're going to discuss this with you guys. And the sources we used for today's episode, so, yeah. uh, we got them from Oila magazine it's a very good um, magazine yes and so that's a it's a you should check it out i mean it's it's supposed to be for teens 
can be for adults, mm -hmm. but it's got a lot of good science information for, for learning. Really cool. I mean, we enjoy them. And actually this episode, cause this is his dad, Jason, you know, he was like, Oh, you guys should, we were reading it. We were, he was going to use infusion. We were in the hospital. And so we we're sitting there and he's like, you guys should do this. I'm like, yeah, I thought about it, but I don't know if it'd be like that entertaining, entertaining, but he's like, no, I really think it would. So I was like, okay, we'll give it a shot. So uh, this was inspired by that. And a lot of the information was taken from there. We also use the Cleveland Clinic, uh, cancer.gov, U.S. Digestive Health, National Institute of Health, MUSC Health, and the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. So I will include some links if you guys want to do some of your own research. But that is where we got the information for today's episode. Let's get started. And we're going to start by talking about the upper GI tract first. Mm -hmm. And so let's start with hunger because this is where the digestive system starts. You have mm -hmm. to eat, right? Yes, you have to eat. So I had looked this up because like I was just saying, I've been curious why Mason did not have an appetite. And I know if you've had a flu, you know, you're not always hungry when you have a flu and then suddenly when you're feeling better, you're super hungry again. So I felt like there's got to be a connection. Some sort of connection with what's yeah. going on there. Like if, you're, if like your body's not feeling well. Stay together. Not, yeah. And so there is some connection. So I thought this was kind of exciting. And again, I'm going to apologize for how I pronounce things. Um, probably should look some of these up again. Attempts were made. Yes. <laughs> I try. So, so how do we know we're hungry? Like what tells a, a normal human being without what makes you disease, feel you know, hungry. anybody, you know, so what makes us feel hungry? The hypothalamus in the brain tells us we are hungry and that's what also makes our stomachs growl. Hmm. So like that's what kind of signals you, right? You get that signal. Like that's why all of a sudden you can be doing your how your classwork. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm hungry now. <laughs> and so without even thinking about it, you're like, oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> and so the information about your stomach the fullness of it, if it's empty, that travels from the digestive system to the brain. And it does that through nerves and substances in the blood. Hmm. So ideally, That's if everything's, yeah, it is. And so an example I'm going to use, I had found this research and it was through ulcerative colitis, but it can also apply to Crohn's because Crohn's disease can affect the colon. And so I think this definitely applies to both. But the study was on ulcerative colitis. They found that a lack of appetite is much more common in patients with inflamed colons, which you had. Yeah, I and, did. Yeah. And a feedback loop to the brain and other digestive organs triggers a change in the hormonal and nervous system controls over hunger and feeling full. Hmm. So there is a connection between that inflammation and the, you know, th what is controlled in as far as what tells you when you're hungry or what tells you when you're full. And so that could be it's why. Interesting how that affects, affects it kind of. Right. Because the colon is, you know, so, so far through everything and um, it's not remotely close to the stomach. So that's kind of interesting how that it ties together. And so that's what the digestive system, that's why I think this is so important to to listen to this and learn today from this, because you're going to learn things you didn't realize how they were tied in and how, you know, hey, this could be if you're, this could be a signal of a flare, this could be a signal of inflammation. So, so, so your body is built like a, a domino chain, everything it relies on everything else. It, it, it is, it is kind of like that. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of excited because I was like, oh, this is perfect because I have been looking for this connection for Mason because I was so curious. And so uh, in the findings, IBD inflammation has shown that it impacts two hormones, leptin, which suppresses your appetite, mm -hmm. and okay, this ghrelin, I think that's how it's That's like ghrelin. Uh -huh. yeah. And that's what tells your brain when you're hungry. Mm. And so the research suggested that if you have an increase in leptin, there, it is a significant cause of reduced food intake in IBD patients. Hmm. And that can mean like, so if you have something like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's, it affects not only a person's ability to digest or desire food, like to want hmm. that food, but to also to their body's ability to experience typical hunger cues. Interesting. But once we got that inflammation under control and he was doing better, that was one of the first signs. And so I thought that was really interesting because we've never heard this before. Mm -hmm. yeah, and be so I think that's important for us to know how it is tied to the digestive system. What is the digestive system? So that includes your mouth, throat, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. And so when Mason would meet with his dietitian, she would always say it starts, digestion starts at the mouth. Mm -hmm. And so it starts with our teeth. So she would say to chew food really mm -hmm. carefully, chew it down small, because that will start 
to help aid in digestion. And so an important, you know, tip for people with IBD, chew your food well. And uh, the probably the faster you eat, that might be why maybe it may not be as good for you. You have to chew a little slower and make sure that, you know, if you are going to eat something um, like a peanut or cashews or something like that, if you can, you would need to chew those well, really well. Very well. So, so that was what she always suggested. Yeah. Chew everything well. Because that at the time, those were suggestions. Like if he's going to try this, it needs to be chewed really well because mm-hmm. digestion starts in the mouth. And so it's like, okay. And so as you're chewing, you have your saliva and the saliva helps to soften the food that we chew. And it also has enzymes and those break down the starch that you, as you're eating into glucose. Hmm. So that already starts, that process Which starts in your mouth. So lysozyme is in saliva and it's something that also helps kill bacteria. So that's cool. part of, so all that is starting, <laughs> cool. you know, right yeah. up at your mouth. It's all yeah. starting. And from there, we're going to go to the esophagus. And okay. so, and this is also something interesting because, I mean, you you can swallow the food, but from there, you're not controlling it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess you're not. Right? It's a weird, I mean, it's uh, not like waving a hand no. or moving your foot. It's not like you can consciously sit there and be like, all right, because why does the food not just stay there? Like, why yeah, does it not just sit there after? Kind like, of natural. Right? So we can't perpetual. control the actions of our stomachs and other, inter- and other internal organs. So it's like head movement, arm movement, all that we can control. And uh, stomachs, internal organs, we can't. Hmm. And so after we swallow our food, how does it move along? So there's something called peristalsis, and that's the undulating movement of our esophagus, stomach, and intestines. So they all do this. Hmm. And so the muscle walls contract and expand, and that is what pushes food down through the system. Interesting. And it allows our food to digest. So whether you're standing up or lying down but you you should always be standing up or standing up while uh-huh but if you've eaten something yeah. and then you're like say you're watching tv and you lay down on the couch after you, i mean mm-hmm. it's not like it's gonna just it, it's not gonna be as good for you but yeah. you're it, it'll it's take not, more work yeah but it's not it's, it's pretty close cool. so the body knows how to do that and so some of you may have gi motility issues and that can affect your digestion the the esophagus is not Part of the food absorption process so that's not where food absorption starts it's just mm. getting it down to there but mm-hmm. the motility process can be affected and uh, there's uh, eoe is one of the disorders there's other things that um can be a problem and even for ibd so motility is also important with digestion and so from there it goes to your stomach okay and so the stomach is has something that called gastric acids that helps you digest your foods. They can break down complex substances into simple ones. So they turn like proteins into amino acids and they turn fats into fatty acids and glycerol and carbohydrates into sugar. And so that all starts in your stomach. That's what's mm-hmm. going on in there. So you have all that. Yeah. And the glands in the walls of the stomach produce enzymes that digest proteins and hydrochloric acid. And so the hydrochloric acid kills some of the bacteria and helps with digestion by breaking down food. So again, this food like starts in your mouth, it starts getting broken down, goes through the esophagus, gets in the stomach, and it's getting further broken down, right? Yeah. And it's like a um, factory line in a it is in a car factory that one machine will add the doors, the other will add the wheels, the other one will add the tires. They all have yeah. a different job. Right? It's like the car moves for they all they all it's one big their thing. Own purpose. And it's not like one, you know, they all not like one's more important than the other. Or yeah. They all They're have all necessary. a job. Yeah. And that's why when something is affected with inflammation or it's you know big deal. because IBD can affect any part of the digestive tract. It's that's why things can be a holdup. It can yeah, be you difficult. Think, I think a good way to explain that would maybe be Something like back to the cars mm-hmm. and the factory. It say the the machine that puts in the doors uh-huh. breaks. So now the doors aren't being put in. Well, now the machine that tries to put the glass in the doors, right? It's it's just gonna fall and shatter because there's no door to the, pre- the previous yeah, process didn't, didn't happen correctly. Work. So now there's just gonna be a waste of glass, right? So and the, and the machine will be able to do its work. Which is a really good example because if something isn't working before it gets to the next spot, it's going to be even harder for that one to do its job. Mm-hmm. If it can do it at all. If it can, yeah, if it can do it. So at all. yeah, so that's a really good example, and that's very true. From the stomach, it then heads into the small intestine, and the small intestine is where nutrients are absorbed into our bodies. And so everything that cannot be digested or used for the benefit of the body is turned into waste 
and disposed of. But the small intestine is really the main source of our uh, absorption of nutrients. And so this is where malnutrition can happen through mm -hmm. malabsorption. It's different because it's not malnutrition through not eating. It's malnutrition through malabsorption, which because means you're can't eating, as well. but the body isn't. And that's why this is so important, guys, because that's why this is an invisible disease, mm -hmm. because you don't know if someone is eating, you may not realize that they are essentially still starving. Yeah. And that can eat and still start. That's interesting. It makes, yeah. yeah. And, and to somebody who doesn't understand how all this works, you may not realize like how that's possible. So that's why this is really important to us and something I think that's worth listening to. So hmm. the small intestine, let's kind of go into that because there's a lot to kind of discuss with these. And so as food is processed and transported, it arrives in the small intestine. And this is the main process of digestion and absorption of food takes place. And so the villi, is in the small intestine and each has a blood vessel that transports prepared substances to the liver. Hmm. So, I mean, that was also interesting because you had hepatomegaly and mm -hmm. you had fatty liver and disease. And so it's that's like, how is the liver? Because that's not like, that's not part of the, the actual digestive. Yeah. System. It's not, I guess that's, <laughs> it's part of it, but we don't, yeah. not part it's of not, it, but it's not really like considered in the main group. Right. It's affected mm -hmm. by it. So this is another part of the body that can be affected by the digestive system, not operating properly. And the liver mm -hmm. is very important. And so it can take several hours for this food to travel through the small intestine because they are long and so it sends about five meters and if you turn that into feet that's 16 feet in wow. the whole human body that's really long yeah and that helps nutrients to be absorbed by the body most efficiently because they have they spend the most time in it if they're too short it, it like which, does that make sense which is why you don't always want to get surgeries and you want to try to treat yep. treat um you want to try to treat the disease without just flights. removing part of it. Yeah. Because don't go straight to surgery. Go unless try, the doctor yeah. unless your doctor wants to, yes. But that's why biologics are important because you're preserving mm -hmm. these parts. So because the more time that this food can go yeah. through your system, the more nutrients are taken out, the more your body is going to be healthier through all of this. So it's really important. Yeah. It isn't it's also different with colitis because you don't only have to remove a part. The the colitis well, there's different uh, ulcerative colitis, yeah, is, is the colon. So that yeah. is a different removal. Um, but yes, there's other things with Crohn's. You know, things can happen. You can yeah. get strictures. Um, you and can the get... problem with Crohn's is even if you do remove a part, you're gonna have to keep removing them because this is gonna, gonna keep, keep coming going. back. So pretty soon you're not gonna have an intent. Right. Which we're gonna kind of go into in a minute. What okay. <laughs> that leads to. But you're you're right on it because you understand this. So I mean it's not to say it's, it's sometimes unfortunately with this is obviously biologics aren't the best for you either. Mm -hmm. But you have to weigh the benefits of surviving and thriving. And mm -hmm. so sometimes if surgery is the option, that is the option at a certain point. But as long as you can keep those small intestines intact, you know, that would be most efficient for you for nutrition and so the first part of the small intestine is the duodenum and i mean we're talking about that you had inflammation there too i heard all these terms and i thought wow how many body parts does he have in inflammation and and it's like I, I you know you don't really realize it's like okay so the duodenum is part of the small intestine but that's actually the first part so that's a major site for an absorption of iron oh okay and you and that's what i was low on right and that's so, what I had to take. I had to take iron pills and you had, iron. You yeah. had blood transfusions. Blood transfusions. And yeah. so, I mean, and again, not a doctor, guys. I know you all know this. I say this all the We're time. Not a We're but just this is in your studies. Articles. You know what we've mm. looked up and researched this very well for you guys to find this information. That does not mean any of you should go be taking iron and doing anything on your own. No. You speak to your doctors first. Let's talk for, to your doctors. Yes, that's this. That's not what this is about. Yeah. This is just to kind of let you know how things function. Yeah. And if you don't like what your doctor is doing. You still don't listen to us because we're not doctors. You get, get a second opinion. opinion. You get a second opinion. <laughs> right, right. But you can take our information yeah. and, and use it you can, to help you guys have more knowledge about how your bodies work. You can actually, work. if you think something, you want this or that, you know, because we recommend it, you know, we're not, you shouldn't do it still, but you can tell your doctor, like, I think this and this, and, you know, you can mm -hmm. suggest it to them to, have an idea or something and right. see what they think about. Or at least you know? if your doctor's talking to you and says, hey, this is what's going on. Instead of you feeling like, is my doctor know what he's talking about? I mean, you might go like, hey, now this is starting to make sense to me because it really helps 
if you can understand things when the doctor is explaining things to you. Like, not, they're not just talking in science. Right. It's like know. a separate language. And you're like, what are you saying? So, what's the, what's the duodenum? <laughs> yeah. And so I think that's, you know, that's important. So, hmm. yes. Yeah, so like we said, the duodenum is the first part of your small intestine. And so its main job is to transfer the partially digested food it receives from the stomach into nutrients your body can use. And so, I mean, this, and there's a lot of things it does. It goes way, there's way more into there, detail, Even more. Your, you know, your red blood cells, everything function as a part of this absorption process. Things are so important here. Um, but some of the notes that I just put down, like digestive juices from your liver, gallbladder and pancreas empty into your duodenum. Hmm. And that helps with digestion and absorption. Basically, it just like we said, helps to absorb nutrients, whether that's vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, all the things that your body needs and along with water. So it's just, it's a huge part of why you can eat really well and be doing all the right things and you're it still doesn't work. Right. Because I actually have heard duodenum a lot, but yeah. especially when I was diagnosed, I heard it a lot, but I never knew it was the first part of, part of the intestine. I didn't right. know that. So I just I learned what that was. Right? So you probably thought I have it somewhere else. Yeah, I was like, but mm. it was in the intestine still. Mm. And so the jejunum is the middle part of the small intestine. Mm. Okay. And so that's a major site for absorption of like folic acid. And it primarily absorbs carbohydrates, amino acids, fatty acids through the villi. And so it um it's just another helpful process of the food digestion and the second part, the middle part of the intestines. So just like the other, just like the duodenum, it absorbs the nutrients. That's and interesting because I thought, food. I mean, obviously I'm not researching intestines and stuff, so I'm not going to know a ton yeah. about them, but I kind of <laughs> just thought they were there to transport food to like, I mean, waste. yeah, but also I thought they all just did the same thing. You know, they slowly take out whatever vitamins and nutrition, whatever. But there's each separate parts like on a car line, right? Mm -hmm. And they all do separate things. Right. And like when I brought up the car thing, I meant specifically like one part of the car line would be the stomach and one would be the intestine, big intestine, throat, whatever. Right. Uh, but it turns out the intestines itself is its own mm -hmm. factory. Yeah. Because the small intestine is such a, it's, there's so many feet in mm -hmm. this. And so that's why it's so important for the food to really go through all of it. So it's getting out everything it needs as it's going through and it's, it's really like cleaning it and mm -hmm. getting exactly what you need. And so that takes us to the ileum, which is the last and longest part of the small intestine. Mm -hmm. The ileum is the most important site for absorption for bile acids, fluid, and vitamin B12. And so the ileum takes nutrients that have been un unabsorbed in the first two parts, the jejunum and the duodenum. And so it takes those and continues to absorb the rest of it. So it helps you get, the, it's like a full process so start to finish. Check. Yeah. Yep. It's like, that's the end, checked everything off and it's, uh, but it serves an important purpose. Mm -hmm. So this is where we're going to talk really briefly. We're not going to go too far into this because this is like a whole nother discussion, but kind of like what Mason had brought up earlier inflammation or things like having surgery on your intestines and so that can the the way they said is it accelerates intestinal transit it's not absorbing because the inflammation it's not going to absorb it correctly or if you've lost part of your intestine if they took out three feet you're going to not have three but, feet where yeah. so it's going to go faster through it so it's not going to be able to get as many of the nutrients so that can lead to malabsorption so if it is moving through everything faster, it limits the contact time with the mucosal surfaces of your intestine. And so that's what leads to malabsorption because there's less contact time with it. It needs mm -hmm. that contact and that to extract everything. When it doesn't do that, it's not extracting it. And so that's going to result in a greater stool volume and other restroom issues that are very common with this disease. And uh, so, yeah, so malabsorption involves the damage to the mucus lining of your small intestine. And if any of you've mm. had scopes, you've seen these lovely pictures. Images. Yeah. Images that you can't unsee. <laughs> I know. Burned you... into your minds. <laughs> I know. The thing you've always like, please don't show me. And the don't doctor's like, me, check be... this out. You're like, no. Oh. <laughs> then she has to see it. Please. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. That was, that's something. That's something else. Um, but yeah. So. And there's something also called short bowel syndrome, and that's a condition in which the body cannot absorb enough nutrients from foods because parts of the small intestine are missing or damaged. Mm -hmm. This is why biologics 
they're they're so aggressive with them because it prevents this damage that can lead to short bowel syndrome and then it can also help prevent surgeries that can also take out intestine that lead to smaller you know time for the food to move be, along the tract and be absorbed yeah, just and so yeah so that's why your small intestine is so important <laughs> important and so now we're going to move from the small intestine to the, the, large, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the large intestine. Large intestine. And so, but before we're going to start talking about the large intestines, I also want to just kind of throw this out here because we mentioned the liver, we mentioned the gallbladder. Mm -hmm. And so we're getting to those. Yeah. So just to throw it out there. So the liver tests substances from the small intestine for harmful components and neutralizes them so they can't hurt your other organs. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's important that your liver is functioning correctly. And bile is produced by the liver, and this helps break down fat into smaller, easier to digest sizes. Mm. So that's kind of the role that that it's like it's the helper to the digestive system, yeah, it and helps. it's important, but it's part of it's it. It's like um, backup. Mm -hmm. And like, bile, actually, bile sounds familiar. Yeah, you've probably heard of that mm -hmm. as well. I mean, you've learned about these things in school briefly, yeah. but this is more a much more intense session mm -hmm. on it. And then you know the gallbladder. Mm -hmm. I think some people have they a lot of times these are removed kind of like the appendix and um, people have these removed because they they're having problems but what does the gallbladder do like when no food is in the small intestine the bile is stored in the gallbladder mm. so seems important yeah so it's like a reservoir it it helps you so, know uh, whenever you need it it's there instantly i i feel like i i don't want to act like this is the only thing it does but this is what we're covering in relation to uh, ibd today and so from the small intestine, we're going to head to the large intestine. And here's something interesting to me, okay? I feel kind of like like I didn't know this. The large intestine is also known as the colon. <laughs> Entire so, thing? So. Okay. So um, it's it's made up of the cecum, colon, and rectum. And so uh, so when people refer to the colon, you're can... referring to the large okay. intestine. I, I did not know that. I thought. Right? Yeah, I did not know but that Again, you're all. probably picturing large intestine. Yeah colon yeah right? it's two different but, parts but apparently it's all the same thing and so the large intestine has thicker walls than the small intestine and larger chambers it's mm -hmm. it's bigger right mm -hmm. and while the small intestine is where the main digestive processes take place if it can't perform its function the large intestine is there to help so it comes in for the assist and so again this is where if your small intestines aren't working quite right because your your inflammation if you also have an inflamed colon now you are in trouble again because it's trying to help the small intestine but it also needs help itself every everyone needs help <laughs> right so this is why i mean this is why this disease also i think can really vary because some of you don't get it and that all some of it stays focused in different parts of the body mason had it everywhere yeah, that's um, great for me <laughs> Right. And for some of you out there, you also had the yeah. same situation. And some of you may have only had it in the small intestine. Some may have only had it in the duodenum. Some may have had it in the stomach, you know, but eventually with this disease, it can occur really anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, so interesting to know, right? Mm -hmm. So the large intestine absorbs water from undigested food remains. So this was really cool to me. So a total of nine liters or about 2.4 gallons of liquid pass through the digestive system every day. Wow. Two liters of food juices, one liter of saliva, two liters of stomach acid, and four liters of the small intestines digestive juices. Yeah. It all passes through there. And this liquid is returned to the body through the large intestine. So dehydration, right? Um, this is another thing. Yeah, so yeah, if your large intestine or colon is not working, right? you're going to be dehydrated. You could be dehydrated. And that's also something like they always tell you, drink a lot of water, do these things. And so if it's not returning that liquid back to the body you know you're you're losing that and that mm -hmm. could also be why when you go to the bathroom it's a lot of fluids coming out it's mm -hmm. not it's not it's not working correctly right and so inflammation prevents the intestinal lining from absorbing enough fluids and nutrients to keep the body healthy and so same as with the small intestine that can happen with the large and so instead of undergoing absorption water leaves the body as watery runny stools description <laughs> yes we're gonna say that i I know i'm like we're just gonna leave it at that but but that's i mean it's kind of neat yeah. it, neat i don't know interesting interesting yeah to know it's why right because you know these things are happening to you and it's but you don't know like where mystery. or why you're like what's going on and so that could make sense why 
you're having certain symptoms or having certain things because it's certain, it, it's, it's important to, to see the symptoms and understand what it could be coming from. So, so you can develop dehydration if you don't take in enough water and electrolytes to replace those lost in bowel movements. That's why you should always drink water. So very important. And that's why one of the things they give all you guys, if you end up in the hospital, they give you a, they give you liquid, you know, you get an mm-hmm. IV and they start putting liquid into you and to get your levels back up. So you're not dehydrated. Dehydration is really not good on the body either. So it's all part of that malnutrition kind of thing going on. And so uh, maybe you're drinking a lot of water, maybe you're eating everything and you're still having problems. And it's because the body might be just kicking it all out and not taking what it needs and not putting it back into the body. So I think it's pretty cool though. I mean, yeah, it's definitely. incredible how these intestines work and they're so efficient. Like they, the small intestine knows its job and then yeah, the large intestine is like, jobs. I have my job and it takes, and it's like, I thought it was like, it's so smart. It takes everything, like instead of like, it's like a, the best recycler ever. Yeah. Like instead of just like throwing everything yeah. away, the large intestine is like, ooh, I'm going to take all this liquid and redistribute it to the body. And I thought that was really, it's like how smart is the body? It's incredible. Well, it's really smart. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> it's so really smart. You know, know all this stuff and remember it, but I just like relearning again so I can understand. I learned for the first time about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think it would have been helpful. I mean, it would have made so much more sense when you were diagnosed. Yeah, to know what's going on. Yes, because I was so confused on like, well, he's doing all these things right. What is going on? Yeah, what's going, what's wrong? And so now it's like, oh, okay, okay, this is making more sense. And I think that it may make some sense to you guys and help out. And uh, I have here a fun note. The appendix is at the end of the large intestine. And it kind of looks like a worm, like in the drawing. I am not <laughs> sure, which is uh, gross. I'm okay, not here like, we go. <laughs> yeah, I was like, ah, oh, but YouTube, it, you, it was YouTube's like, going to cancel <laughs> us. And I was like, I, I pictured, like, I don't know what I was picturing, but it wasn't that. I don't know why, but I, I'm, I picture the appendix has a bone. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, like attached, like um the femur or something. Yeah, it's no, like no. So the appendix is at the end of the large intestine, and that helps eliminate harmful bacteria in the intestinal tract and serves as a refuge for friendly bacteria. Oh. So sometimes people are like, oh, appendix doesn't have any purpose. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, but it's, like, it does. it's like, you know. It, I mean, maybe it's not a super important purpose and you can survive without it. A lot of people have their appendix, you know, they're removed. It still has a purpose. But it has a little purpose there. And it does. I mean, it's, it, I was don't, just don't like, make your appendix sad. Don't say it's useless. I, well, you know, sad. I think we have these images and it's, I don't know yeah, where yeah, the, we get the them. The funnest part is uh, trying to show those pictures with YouTube not canceling. <laughs> it's not like that graphic. Yeah. I went, <laughs> like like a, just a drawing, like a yeah. rendering of it. Yeah. But I thought that was interesting about Mm -hmm. the appendix. And then also there's something else we hear about, which is the microflora, the flora in your, in your gut. And I know one time, because you had a, you had your scopes, one Mm -hmm. of the times you flared and they think that's because they flushed out when that, when you're doing that, you're the clean out and then you you get get rid rid of all of it. You get rid of all the little happy little guys. Right. And so what is microflora and digestive process is largely dependent on friendly bacteria in the intestines like your microflora and most of them are found in the large intestine and help prevent the spread of harmful bacteria Hmm. Uh, they help the body synthesize vitamins b d k and e is what it said which i you know again i just read this and um but they also neutralize harmful compounds as well so the flora the microflora um, there, that's why there's a lot of, um, I know supplements out there, people take stuff to keep the flora healthy in your body. And so there's, it's, there is good bacteria and it helps with the bad not bacteria. All, not all bacteria is bad. Exactly. It's very true. And we're not always taught you hear bacteria and you think, oh, bad, but no, not all the time. So, so anyways, that is our quick rendition of podcast. the digestive process and I mean, there's a lot more that we didn't cover so. but i thought this this was so important to me because it was something that i had questions that have never really been answered yeah, i think that was really interesting too yeah and i think it and it's like it started clicking like oh this is why mason wasn't hungry oh this yeah, is why, this why it all makes sense yeah i'm like it does it really and so i think it it can only help empower you with this disease to understand it more and kind of take the mystery out and just think oh my body's just malfunctioning it's an autoimmune disease it's this you know it's like yes but why and how what is happening and so i i think it may help a little bit to know like this is what's going on and it may comfort or 
not <laughs> i know i don't know i feel like it's so you know what's going wrong and yeah not just blindly... i don't want it to bring anybody stress that's not the idea yeah. i hope not but i hope so from learning experience. You. yeah and especially the parents out there you can understand if you have someone newly diagnosed and you're having all these things thrown at you and there's some confusion i mean this is just a great reminder or if you're listening to us because you haven't been diagnosed yet these are great things to know because Going it's important forward. to yes. to notice and to take care of it mm -hmm. and and keep up on the doctor and make sure that you're getting the care you need and understand how important it is for your digestive system to work properly it's a big yeah. deal so so anyways i hope you guys found that interesting and i really did and i i you know and i know you did too I yeah i learned was... i learned quite a bit from it yeah, so I hope I, learned a bit too. Yeah, I just research yeah. everything and tr try to find credible. It's like running a research from reliable sources. Yeah, and so just just so that we can put it all together and kind of connect the dots and help you guys better understand mm -hmm. the human body and how IBD malnutrition malabsorption can work and how important it is to understand that the digestive system has important jobs to do. So. Uh, so with that, guys, we will leave you with that. And you Fun can episode. follow us on Instagram at Team IB Determined. And we went this week to the San Diego Blood Bank and mm -hmm. kind of threw like a little Halloween party. Halloween party. Yeah. We put everything on a cart. We went to all the different. We went to the main headquarters where the labs are. And um, we just to thank everybody for, for what they do. What you they know, do. yeah. Most we can. It was the least we can do. Yeah. Or what they. For saving my life yeah and a bunch of other people lives, right. you know it's like it's there's there's so many i mean the donors are incredibly important but the staff and everyone behind the scenes yeah. who makes it work and yeah you may have is, people willing to donate blood but you but need you them. need the blood bank to do that right and you may think the blood bank is just uh the taking the blood and putting it in a vial and storing it but there's people calling, there's people unloading the trucks, there's people who... The whole um, center where they process yeah. it, like clean it, like go through the it. Scientists, there's so many people mm -hmm. involved. Just like we we have a whole episode on that, and I encourage you guys to to learn more about the blood bank because... You support your local blood bank. Some of you may have not needed a blood transfusion, and some of you will need one. And so I think that's another helpful process to understand and to know the importance of because you never know when you'll need it. Yeah. So we had some fun. We went to the the main one in San Diego, and then we went to our local one up in Vista to thank donors. And that was another great site as well. We really just had a good time. So go ahead and uh, check us out. We also went to the Legacy Foundation. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, that so was, that's on there too. Food. Yeah. Fish and steak. You like the sea bass. Mm -hmm. So sea bass good. Yeah. So you'll be able to catch up. We had a great week. It's been a, a really a really it's good blended week. Good with fundraising, good with meeting volunteers and donors. So just a really cool week. So you can check us out on Team I Be Determined and catch those adventures and the oh, Reggie adventures. Project. You know, yeah, the Reggie Project. Yeah, Reggie. And also you guys are if you're listening to us already, you probably know, but we're on Spotify iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and... There's a lot more connected to those. The mm -hmm. Buzzsprout will be linked in the description. Right, so you can see every station mm -hmm. where you can find us. And, and then there's YouTube Podcasts, which yeah. is We've been still kind of new. Listening. Some of you are listening through. You might be listening right now through YouTube, which is kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, that's cool. There's so, drama on yeah. YouTube. And if you do want to watch us, you know, we are... We're not just on the YouTube Podcasts. We're on the YouTube videos, too. So uh, yeah. if you want to watch us and hear us, you can go to the YouTube videos and if you all are and if you are already watching us make sure to like and subscribe and if you want to be notified yeah. every time we post a video make sure to hit that bell icon we we'd love to have we're like yeah. we've been at 89 subscribers 89 which, subscribers which that's is, so good I mean, that's that for that's us, a big deal that's a big deal right like for uh, for our goals that means 89 of you have subscribed and because you found our too. channel cool yeah and Helpful. so we've been here for it'd be really cool to get to 90 i want to so cool. every time i keep checking i'm like is that there <laughs> yes is it there it needs to be there <laughs> well one of you guys subscribe so we can finally go to yeah go with that Sorry, peace it would be kind of cool to see it change and please comment we love reading your comments please and do. we read every single one of them Please, yeah. like, let us know how you're doing. Let us know, you yeah, know, how you're feeling right now. Uh, what led you to find this podcast? We're, what interested you in this video? We are here to support. We're here to listen and uh, just kind of, you know, make sure you're not alone. You're not invisible. And uh, we'd love to hear from you guys, you know, whatever it is. So um, please do, like I yeah. said, comment. And 
we will see you guys again in two weeks and we'll have some more adventures for you guys but if you follow us on team i be determined on instagram you'll see first before the next you'll, you'll see where we've been yes so. we've Oh, you're big <laughs> It's exciting. Yes, so, it is. Very. Thank you for listening, guys. So have a good day. Good week. Good, yes, good. Everything. Full day, break, whatever. Special day. I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you soon. Next episode. Yes. Next Bye. Episode. Bye, guys. We hope you will stick around, tune in, and reach out to us with your own journeys. We are excited to give you an inside view of what it takes to be a caregiver and what it's like to be a patient. And most of all, we hope you'll maybe be able to play something you hear on here that might help you in your own life. Sometimes life changes, and it's all about how you handle the journey.